this presentation will discuss about the requirements for drug activity. Let us first define what is drug activity. In pharmacology, when we say drug activity, that refers to what happens to the drug at the molecular level. It means the molecular interaction of a drug with its receptors. So this interaction can be uh, analogous to the concept of the lock and key mechanism, wherein the lock represents the receptor and the key represents the drug. This diagram shows a simplified diagram illustrating the drug receptor binding. This is an, again analogous to the concept of the lock and key, wherein the key represents the drug and the, the, the lock represents the receptor. So in this example, we have two drugs, the drugs A and B. And as you can see here, the structure of the drug A is complementary to that of the receptor. And therefore, the drug A can bind to the receptor. Meanwhile, the drug B is not compatible with the receptor. So therefore, there is no binding that happened between the drug B and the receptor. So this uh, line here means that this binding is reversible. And again, when the drug A has bound to its receptor, that, it, that means that the drug has exhibited its action. So under the drug activity, the most potent drug at the receptor will fit perfectly and other drugs with similar but non-identical structure may fit less effectively and therefore be less potent and have no effect. This is a representation of the relationship between a drug and its receptor that is similar to a lock and key concept. Again, the key here represents the drug and the lock represents the receptor. So the better the fit, the the better would also be the response. So this is exemplified in letter B you know, because the drug was able to fit perfectly with the receptor. So we can say that those drugs with complete attachment and response are called agonists. So again, when we say agonists, those are drugs that will bind and activate the receptor. Most likely, these drugs have a complete attachment. We also have those drugs that attach but do not elicit a response as seen in this example and they are known as antagonists. Another example is those drugs that attach and elicit a small response but that also block other responses and these are known as partial agonist drugs. When a drug molecule interacts with a drug receptor, a drug receptor complex is formed, as shown in this figure. We have here our drug, and we have here our receptor. The interaction of the two will form a drug receptor complex. This DR complex is responsible for the triggering the formation of a stimulus to produce an effect. Provided that this drug is an agonist, its binding will form a complex that will eventually lead to a response. This diagram shows the drug or ligand receptor interaction. So we have here our drug and we have here our receptor. The drug will bind to the ligand binding domain of the receptor. Then it will form a drug receptor complex and after its formation, that will be the time that it will produce its effect. And this can be represented in this equation. Drug plus receptor will form a DR complex and form an effect. This line here represents the rate of association and the rate of dissociation of this complex, meaning that their interaction and their binding is considered to be reversible. What are the requirements for drug activity? The first requirement for drug activity is affinity. When we say affinity, that is the tendency of a drug to bind with its specific receptor. It is also a measure of tightness with which a drug binds to the receptor. 
It is also defined as the extent to which a drug binds to receptors at any given drug concentration. A useful parameter to describe affinity is KD or the drug dissociation constant. This is defined as a measure to describe the strength of binding or affinity between receptors and their ligands. The binding of a drug with its receptor can be expressed in this equation. D plus R drug plus receptor is equal to the formation of a DR complex. The line from the left to right represents the rate of association, while the line from the right to the left represents the rate of dissociation, meaning that this binding can be dissociated in certain circumstances. Or this also means that this binding between the drug and the receptor is reversible. So again, the equation between the formation of the DR complex is considered to be a reversible reaction. And uh, at equilibrium, the rate of the drug receptor complex formation is equal to the rate of the drug receptor dissociation. So this is represented in this um, parameter. We have the K1, that is the rate of formation of the DR complex. And the K-1 is the rate of dissociation of the DR complex. What is the importance of this drug dissociation constant or KD? So this is important as it is used to describe the affinity of drugs to its receptors. The relationship between the KD and the affinity is said to be inverse, meaning that the smaller the value of the KD, the greater is the affinity. The higher the value of the KD, the lower the affinity. The higher the KD value, the weaker the binding and the lower is the affinity, meaning that Pag lower yung affinity between the drug and the receptors, ibig sabihin, mas madali siyang ma-dissociate. So, the affinity is one of the factors that determine potency. So, again, when we say potency, that is defined as the amount of the drug that is required to produce an effect. So, the affinity is said to be inversely proportional to the potency. This means that the higher the affinity of the drug, the less would be the amount or the dose required to produce an effect. Now, the lower the affinity of the drug, the more is the dose of the drug required to produce an effect. The second requirement for drug activity after affinity is intrinsic activity or efficacy. So, this is defined as the inherent capacity of the drug to activate the receptors and thus inducing an effect. It also refers to the maximal effect a drug can produce. It is also the ability of the drug to elicit a pharmacological response when the interaction occurs with the receptor. This diagram shows an example of a dose-response curve of two drugs, A and B. The y-axis represents the effect of the drug and the x-axis represents the dose. From left to right, that is increasing dose, and from bottom to the top of the vertical line, that represents the efficacy. So the highest point represents the maximum effect of this particular drug. As you can see in the diagram, when we are going to increase the concentration or the dose of the drug, there is also a gradual increase in the effect of that particular drug. When we are going to describe the efficacy of this drug, both drug A and B were able to achieve maximum effect, meaning they have equal efficacy. However, the drug A was able to achieve this effect at a lower dose. So, Maximum effect of the drug A was attained at this particular dose, while the maximum effect of the drug B is attained at this particular dose farther from the left. So thus, we can say that drug A has higher potency than the drug B. Of course, when we are comparing two drugs, 
in terms of its potency, we need to consider the ED50. So this uh, ED50 here is the half maximal effect of that particular drug or the dose of the drug that produces a half maximal effect ED50 or EC50. So again, when we are going to compare the two, the ED50 and the EC50 of the drug B to drug A, so mas malaki yung dose that is required in order to achieve ED50 as compared to the drug A which is achieved at a lower dose. So, sabihin, drug A is more potent than drug B. So this is another dose response curve of two drugs, drug A and B. And as you can see here, the drug A in red achieves a higher maximum effect compared to the drug B. So therefore, we can say that the drug A is more efficacious than the drug B because it has achieved a higher maximum effect as shown in the dose response curve. So therefore, when we are going to examine the efficacy of two or more drugs through a dose response curve, we always look on the vertical line. So the higher the position in the dose response curve, the higher would also be the efficacy of this particular drug. This is another dose response curve of two drugs, drug A and B. The B here represents the blue line while the drug A represents the red line. So here, both drug A and B was able to achieve the same maximum effect. So we can say that they have equal efficacy. Drug B, however, was able to, be, to achieve the EC50 at a lower dose compared to the drug A. So therefore, we can say that drug B is more potent than the drug A. So, However, the drug A, now as you can see here, it has a steeper dose response curve compared to the drug B. So what is the significance of this? This means that a rise from the EC50 to the Emax is accomplished with a relatively small dose for the drug A as compared to the drug B. So as you can see here, yung the, the dose required for drug A in order to achieve Emax is narrower or smaller as compared to the dose required for the drug B in order to achieve the Emax. So kasi ito siya, mas wider yung uh, the dose that is needed in order to achieve the Emax. So that is also another helpful information as to the efficacy as well as the safety you know, of this particular drug.